Simon. So this week, Simone Biles withdrew from competing in the individual all-around competition of the Olympics after stating that she needed to better her mental health. Simone Biles has not lost an all-around competition uh, since she was 16 years old and still have braces. Today, Simone Biles is 24 years old. Hats off to Simone Biles. She did what needed to be done. <laughs> she prioritized herself, um, which is incredible. It is leadership. It is powerful. It is teaching. Um, I'm so proud of her. I'm so happy for the other women that this will inspire the other people that this will inspire and I bid her well in her recovery. I love it. Keep the same energy. Work on being better when I'm 70. Your drip is just a water spring. You know I drip different, just the seven seas. I deal with life different, make that limit squeeze. Went off for my style and identity. Better bounce back and get the tell you I am so 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 excited about featuring Marie Smith on this segment of betting on me bomb energy um she is absolutely fire I met her uh through a tribe that I'm a part of called I Found Women of Color and she's just I just told her this today she's a heartbeat of the group um and a very important part of the fabric the fibers of what makes it special so we're going to unpack a lot of things because she's the og you'll see in, the, in a second but <laughs> well, welcome marie thank you casey thank you so much <laughs> You're welcome. um so marie will dive in so since i met you in the virtual community that olivia owens created for i want i fund women of color members you've imparted so much knowledge to those of us in entrepreneurship uh, can you please share your journey in entrepreneurship and what it is that your company does for the people it serves. Yeah, yeah. So um, my journey in entrepreneurship really started with my parents mm -hmm. uh, when I was young. And so uh, my mom is this like crazy genius of all sorts. And she, uh, she actually studied whatever she was studying because she was a young mom. So whatever she was studying, I was studying. So my mom actually studied medicine, law, and engineering <laughs> at one point in her life. And so she was like trying stuff out and doing different degrees and programs and whatever, but she just, you know, there was no support system for her. So ultimately she became a teacher because that was the only support system that was really for like a woman of color, like in the Midwest, right? There was no support in law and medicine and all this stuff. She had different different challenges in each of those professions that were actually easy to overcome if I look back at, at it from my lens of my life, right? But from her lens and her life, there was no support system to help her overcome those things. She was just like, they're like, just like, ah, get out of here or whatever. Um, and so it wasn't that she wasn't capable and it wasn't even that she wasn't good at it. It was just, you know, she had, so it was more like social challenges or challenges with white males or different things like that, that discouraged her from continuing. And so, um, you know, she, when she was learning engineering, she had, we, my parents bought a computer and um, she was learning programming and she was like, hey, here's this programming thing. And I was really into video games. I was really awkward. I wasn't, I really wasn't into like kickball or dodgeball sports or anything like that. And so I was like, this is awesome. Let me, you know, play my Pac-Man. Let me play do whatever. And then she was like, well, check this out. You can do all these other things um outside of just typing you can change the colors or whatever i didn't know what i was doing was called programming mm -hmm. i just knew that i was playing with the computer i just called it playing with the computer i want to go play with the computer okay you know go right and my dad was happy because my mom had stopped programming at a certain point and then uh we had the computer and nobody else was using it but me <laughs> So, so that's how my, that's how my journey started. I just always had this like weird skill set. And then every time I would tell somebody I had that skill set and then they go, Oh, really? So, you know, back in the day, it just was called knowing computers. Like they didn't call programming either. <laughs> it's like, do you know computers? And I was like, yes, I know computers. And I was like, doesn't everybody know computers? And they're like, no. 
And so that so that's how I got all my jobs. And then um, I went into the newspaper business because it was like becoming digital at the time. It was becoming historically newspapers were like uh, what do you call it? They were just like uh, pasted pieces of paper and metal on boards, and then they printed from those. But then they became digital. You start using digital things. So so then I realized, oh, I can. I can make my own newspaper. I can make my own t-shirts. I can make my own whatever. So that's when I finally, like, that's when it first occurred to me that like, oh, I can make my own life, my own reality, my own business, right? I had no idea what I was talking about, but me and my me and my best friend went to the, the top newspaper, one of the top newspapers in town um, outside of my job and said, hey, we want to start a newspaper and we like to run a, run it as a, uh, a, you know, we like to have a, a newspaper for kids and teens and urban and all this stuff and uh, hip hop and whatever. And he was like, oh, you little kids can't do that. <laughs> and he just like completely shut us down. And so I didn't, I didn't know. Yeah. So then I was like, well, that's the only person I know. Right. So, so in the beginning, pitching was like years apart. Right. Cause I was like, hear about something or meet somebody or whatever but it was like many years apart so I was like yeah. like I did one pitch when I was 16 and then I did one pitch when I was 19 that's so <laughs> impressive though Marie and I just started right and but then I wound up in a startup that startup became a part of a company called AOL wow. and AOL was like the Google before Google for those of you who don't know that, know what AOL is um, and, and that was the beginning of everything. I mean, that was like the beginning of kind of shooting to the stratosphere because we really worked with a lot of different celebrities and we worked with, uh, electronic arts for, uh, FIFA 2000 and NBA 2K. Wow. We worked with the Mars mission. We worked with the Nobel prize foundation, we worked with the Hawaiian tropics models. We worked with musicians, we worked with Buster Rhymes. Uh, we worked with uh, lots and lots of people, wow. right? And on, uh, we worked on a weird little movie called Undercover Brother. If you ever heard of that? Yeah. Um, what? And so uh, we did a lot of different fun projects and and worked on a lot of great things. And uh, learning that this digital reality was going to become a thing, or that was a, it was a thing that people that was never going away, right? Right. right. So then I thought, oh, I could get, I could just go and make up my own life and my own career based on all the stuff I know. Because now it's not just knowing computers, it's knowing everything digital. So like, yeah. go make it happen. Yeah. I was like, wow, the world's my wisher. I could go make it happen. And so, yeah. so that started my journey. I just was like, okay, I'm a consultant. I'm gonna try to help people with this tech stuff, and and that led me to a lot of different other journeys. That is, I mean, like. There is just so much to unpack in that. Um, so a lot of what you said <laughs> resonated with me or resonates with me because when I was in my corporate finance career, I structured multi-billion dollar loan for tech companies. So EA, you know, Electronic Arts, that was my client and Dell and these other <laughs> um, big companies. And there was never in, anyone in the room that looked like me, a black woman, you know? So for you, so for you to be... I mean, hands on, like woven into the the deals and the outputs and the products of these big players, is huge. Um, so I got to say that, like, I think having someone with your experience um, in in communities like iPhone Women of Color, right, where you are in close proximity to other other Black women who've never seen or conceived these things, is just so powerful, right? And and that's why I can, yeah. I can tell why you radiate, you know, so much energy <laughs> for, for me, right? Because um, you've touched what I aspire to, right? And then the fact that you pitched at 16 you. and 19, like, I'm still trying to get like 50 year old women to pitch, you know, as my clients, like you, like just do it, right? Get those reps in. Um, so I think that's phenomenal. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta get the reps in, that's for real. That's so encouraging, but well, kudos to you. Um, I, I don't even know how I'm gonna fit all of this in a segment because you are just amazing, but I will move on. So Thank you. Um, we recently shed some tears in our intimate circle of sisterhood, given you needed us to know that things do get better, no matter how hard they seem today, right? That we should not stay in a place of bitterness um, and that we must keep swinging. 
So uh, can you share with us what some of the toughest hurdles uh, that you've had to face in your entrepreneurial journey and how did you push through those times? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's funny. It's been different kinds of things, right? So in the beginning, it was, it was getting out of my town, right? And getting to a bigger venue of opportunity, right? So I grew up in Kansas City. So at the time, Kansas City was not on the up and up. Yeah. It was like the, it was the highest, murder capital per capita at the time wow. in the United States. Um, there was just like tons of gang activity, a bunch of stuff. My dad was a cop, so I was extremely aware of it. He was an FBI deputy and a cop, so, and he was going through it. What? Um, and he was going through it, you know, as a black man on the police force, he was going through it because his partner, or not his partners, but like his colleagues, let's say, on the police force, two of them were the people that beat the two of the cops that beat Rodney King. They became cops in LA. <laughs> and, and so he's just going through it. Like he was just sort of like pantomiming to us about all the racism and craziness that was going on in his venue. Right. And he was holding it together to keep our family together. Um, and I was like, well, I need to go on this adventure to move our family into another arena. Mm -hmm. Right. Besides working for the government <laughs> and and and, and 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 that was basically the default for most black people in Kansas City. It was like working for the government or being destitute. Mm. Those are the two options. And there wasn't a there weren't there weren't I mean there were few and far between though, but there were, you know, black lawyers and black engineers and black, you know, people in the military and whatever. Um my grandfather was a politician and he was very up and coming. He was like the Barack Obama of our family. Oh, wow. uh, but uh, he had done a lot of great things and, and successfully ran for office. Uh, but, you know, I, I had cousins in the Senate of the state and things like that, but it was still like not, you know, it was, it was, it was like, there were, there were more family members that were on the other side than the successful side, mm -hmm. right. On the other side of just, what the hell am I supposed to do with my life? How am I supposed to live? There's all this racism and craziness and I don't get opportunity and that's it. And it's stuck, right? And so so that was number one, that was the number one hurdle. So I was I was blessed enough to get into USC film school, which is the number one film school in the world. Nice. Um, and and that was because of John Singleton. He was friends with a call with a neighbor of mine from Kansas City who went to USC. And, and she said, hey, you need to apply to film school because my friend John, blah, blah, blah. And then at the time, I didn't know who John Singleton was. Right. Right. And I, I don't think he had, I don't think Boys in the Hood had come out, but it was coming out. Um, and she was sort of like, he wrote this movie and it's coming out and you need, we need more representation there. And I was like, that sounds a lot more interesting to me than Harvard or, yeah. you know, uh, Stanford or whatever and the reason was my whole life I had asked one question I was like how much does the president make and they were like a hundred and something thousand a year and then I was like how much does Diana Ross make because mm -hmm. my, my caliber of success was Diana Ross because she was the producer <laughs> the actor naturally the singer <laughs> she had like five titles and I was like I had never seen a black woman with five titles but I just used to look at this this poster for Black History Month mm -hmm. and Diana Ross was on there and it was her and all the titles she was, right? And I was just all like, I want to be all those. Right. That's dope. Right? I was just like, you can be five things. I want to be five things. That's dope. So, <laughs> yeah. So I used to come home and I'd be like, dad, tell me how much this person makes and tell me how much this person makes, right? Mm -hmm. And they're like, do you want to be the president? And I was like, well, how much does the president make? Mm -hmm. And then they'll and then they tell me, you know, the hundred and seven thousand. Then uh, how much is oh they make millions of dollars? I was like, mm, no. And then I would look at and then I look at like a government video and then I look at like Soul Train. Right, and I'd be right, like, right. where is where is that? Where are those Soul Train people? Because they look like they're having hella fun. They look like they're getting paid. I, I just had this sense of like they're having fun and they're getting paid. And where are they? Because they're somewhere. They're not nowhere. They're not in a fantasy land. They're somewhere. Yeah. And I was like, there's a place where black people are doing good and having a good time. Right. 
Okay. And I have seen somewhere and I am gonna find these people. So then then I finally figured out like, oh my God. Uh you know, these people I could make it out of here and these people are here and I knew that because of my cousins because of different my cousins that play football and basketball and stuff like that they play for the NBA they play for the NFL mm. so I knew you could get out mm. and I was like it's not just sports and it's not just the government there's other ways you get out too yeah. Yeah. and then it turns out my my family was like hiding from me that my family was already in the entertainment business really in California they just didn't want me to be in it <laughs> <laughs> they didn't want me to know <laughs> but I came out here, I started, I, when I got to USC, I came out here and I found out my cousins had been on TV, they had been in Hollywood, they had owned restaurants, we had this total entrepreneurial part of the family, but my grandmother specifically did not want me to know that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I was like, oh my God, let me just go, go with my people, you know, I'm clearly yeah. part of this genetic code, yeah. let me just use this genetic code instead of this <laughs> one thing. This oppressed, you know, I don't want to be oppressed or whatever. So that was that was a big part of it. And then, you know, um, my family gave me every kind of worry. Oh, I'm going to be a waitress. Mm -hmm. And he was framed for a bank robbery, just like the ones in Chicago, except it was in Wichita. Mm -hmm. And I had heard the story my whole life, right? Because it happened right before I was born. Mm -hmm. And he fled to Africa. Well, first they said he got killed. Then they said he fled to Africa. It turned out he did fly he did flee to Africa. He went to Liberia. Um, and so I'd always like known in the background, like that meant something. Yeah. And what I did realize was all the Panthers had become lawyers or legal experts. Mm. And I didn't know that in Oakland, like almost all of them are either, they are like supreme legal experts. <laughs> <laughs> or government policy makers or whatever that's what happened to them people don't know what happened to the rest of the Panthers they all became experts in fighting the government experts in the constitution experts mm -hmm. in this and that right mm. so I wound up with these legal materials mm. and I don't realize they're written by these Panthers <laughs> I don't realize that's the Panthers writing the legal materials right but I'm like this is the bomb right they tell you how to write all the letters how to petition mm -hmm. how to fight how to start fighting the system mm -hmm. so then I got the book and then I started passing around to everybody I knew because I was like right. here's how you fight the system that's right and and then I learned how to fight the system you know I got my case terminated I still need to get it erased but I got it terminated mm -hmm. um and uh did time on it I mean everything the whole thing it was crazy what? And I was just like, I'm a corporate citizen. Like, I, I was like, I work for corporations. Like, I don't do this. But it was racism. Yeah. You know, at the extreme levels, right? Yeah. And they were, and they were even, even when I got the case terminated, they were still trying to threaten me with some corrupt thing. And I said, look, I'm here right next to this federal courthouse in Los Angeles, and I will file an injunction on you. And when they, when I said that, when I started talking exactly like the lawyer, right? Because the Panthers had trained me, right? I was like, oh, then I was like, I'm into the Constitution all the way. I read it backwards and forwards. Right. I read it from front to cover. I learned everything I could learn about Supreme Court decisions, about <laughs> procedures. And that was a real hurdle because everybody turned their back. Everybody I knew had turned their back on me. And I was like, unbelievable, right? Like, mm -hmm. and I understand that they were scared and they didn't even understand what's going on and they were brainwashed. <laughs> all of the above. All of the above. Right, and they were scared of being targeted themselves if they got involved. Right. right. Um, so they were like, "Shit, she's in this. She's she's got to deal with this." But I was like, "Man, they could have killed me." Yep. And nobody would have known the difference. So and, and that, most wouldn't have cared, black woman. You know, like that's yeah, and they would have just been crying at my funeral, going, oh, "I don't know how this happened," and then yeah. the, that would have been it. Yeah. And so I had to, you know, I will never forget. I had this lady pray over me this older white lady she said make her a servant mm. of god make you make her a servant put her into service god mm. and i was just all like girl you preaching it because look this, this is I, I really quaked to unlearn <laughs> i really started quaking in my boots because i was like make me a servant right girl. and then 
And then from that moment, I, all the tools that I needed to fight showed up. Yeah. And I'll never forget that in my life. I'll never forget that. And so, so uh, I wound up working with the ACLU after that and lobbying in Sacramento and getting on the buses and talking to congressmen and all that stuff about all kinds of laws. It wasn't just the, the ones that affected me. I talked about the ones that affected me, mm-hmm. but also there were there was a slate. It was like 20 some odd laws that the Panthers and the other groups, the Brown Berets and all those groups you hear about that you think they're just protesting though, no, they are changing. Cool. They are changing laws, oh, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. And I met, I met a young woman named Alicia Garza <laughs> and they wind up starting freedom and power and black lives mm-hmm. matter. And so, so mm-hmm. it was a, it was a very special time where the, where this next level of movement was started. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize I was part of a movement and it was mm-hmm. a blessing. My curse became a blessing. Yep. And then I wind up in those hallways and I, I just think about it. It just makes me cry. Yep. I was in the hallway and the number one thing the senator said was we need the data we need data to change the world we need data for this we need data for that and I was like data I was like wait y'all don't have access to the same as the Silicon Valley people wait so I'm one of those people because I'm part of both of these worlds now so I'm like wait y'all don't have access to the technology and the data that this whole state supports and y'all run the government it was just mysterious to me Mm mm-hmm it didn't make any sense to me. So I was like, oh, all of y'all are still in the past. I've been in the future for 20 years and y'all are in the past. Say that, Maureen. So then I was like, oh, so the truth, data is the truth. Because you can't argue with the numbers of what's actually being counted. So I was like, oh, so this is what's happening to our people. This is what's happening to black people. This is what's happening to incarcerated people. This is what's happening to the police. This is what's happening to all these. They don't, you don't, they don't want you to know the truth. They don't want you to know the numbers. They don't want you to know the visibility. So I said to the ACLU guys, I said, hey, I'm a data wizard. I know about data. If y'all need data for something, I got you. I, you know, and at the time I was doing something not as important, right? So I was, I was helping investigate uh, pay-per-view violations were the Manny Pacquiao Mayweather fight. Wow. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so I was, I was mining data on the internet. Yeah. And seeing where people were making illegal viewing parties and reporting that back to a lawyer who had a private investigator that would go out and find the people on behalf of HBO. So I was like, okay, that's interesting. But I was like, I'd rather do something more important, right? That that will help people. And so then the, one day I get a phone call, the ACLU says, hey, we can, uh, we do need a data person. Don't tell anybody. Uh, what do you need? And I was like, tra- they were in San Diego. So I was like, train ticket, housing, food. <laughs> <laughs> or payment for all of those, right? So they were like, they're like, okay, we'll just expense it so we don't have to go through all this paperwork with you. Right. So so they got me a condo on somebody else's expense report. That's so dope. They got me a train <laughs> ticket. They got me train tickets. They got me food. I mean, and it was it was very nice. So compliments, to, you know, to the ACLU. Yeah. Uh, and we sat with this data from the state of California. And it turned out it was all about uh, corruption, right? So it's all about the police and the probation, the sheriff's department and the state not monitoring where this money's going. Mm. That was supposed to be for the community. Mm. It was the first time there was a law that was like said, the money goes to the community. The money doesn't go to the sheriff's department or probation or any of these places. And so, but the, the counties were still letting it happen. So they let, they basically let the, the first bucket of money that came through, they let the sheriffs and the probation people steal the money for their budgets, even though it was supposed to go immediately to the community. Eventually, it did go to the community, but there was a portion of it that was stolen. So we we were the first ones to work with ACLU to bust the state of California on that whole corruption thing. Uh, and it got published in the New York Times and the LA Times and the what New York, you? you know, the... 
NPR and all that. And so that was the beginning. And and then other companies and software companies, they were like, oh, nonprofits need data, governments need data, they need software. And I'm like, yeah, yes. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, so we wound up working on other ones. So we wound up working on um, an organization that prevented child abuse called Prevent Child Abuse America. We wound up working on with MasterCard Philanthropy. We wound up working with um, uh, the Drug Policy Alliance on Latinos being targeted in New Mexico mm. by police, disproportionately mm-hmm. targeted, mm-hmm. and helping them process that data. Important. Uh, yeah, all these all these important things. So then it turns out now, fast forward, of course, the ACLU has a chief data officer. <laughs> um, but we just we just established that practice and show that it was possible and then and then you know they build a structure around it and then it just turned out that oh there was all these left behind people um and the mayor's office city of la said hey we don't have data either we don't have it together uh can you help us right and they're now just now getting to a point of maturity where they're building out their first systems so, so I got back channeled into the mayor's office and the mayor started supporting our business and getting us trained and getting us ready to work for the city. So, so, you know, really, you know, so much kudos to Mayor Garcetti and his office and, and, you know, and all his, uh, you know, all his uh, chiefs are women of color, black women, Latino women, <laughs> I mean, white women, women, right? Yeah. Um, and I'm always so, so grateful for that. And, and so, you know, those women have been amazing and very supportive and, you know, also some from the county and things like that. So, so we just were able to grow our business, you know, with small business clients, with the government, with everything. And then, uh, and then we were introduced to Google (laughs) and we found out that Google had the same problems. Mm. And we were like, wow, this is real crazy. They're like, yeah, so we're trying to teach coding in schools. They were in Crenshaw High. Mm. They were in um, the other one that's over there. Can't remember the name of it right now. Um, And they were saying, well, they treat us like the Borg. They don't, they they think we're the evil empire. They don't want to talk to us, you know, whatever. We have a hard time having, reaching people. We want to help people. We have a hard time helping people. We don't know we're doing wrong, right? And it's because it's, you know, a bunch of like white ivory tower people right. trying to, no, yeah, and they just, yeah. the cultural yeah. awareness wasn't there. The yeah. accessibility wasn't there. Now, yeah. now, six years later, they're a lot better, right? But back then they were really having a problem. They said, well, you know, they basically said to me, you know, behind the scenes, not, this was not a public announcement. They said, we're on the same trip you guys are on. We want to do better. We, want, we know we need to access people. We know we need to help black and brown people. We know we need to get to schools. We know we need to train workers. Mm-hmm. We know this. We don't know how you know this, but we know this, right? <laughs> and I'm like, I don't have to wait. I'm like, I live this, right? So I'm like, yes. I live this. <laughs> I don't need a report to come to me Girl. to tell me that it's happening. I right. live this, <laughs> right? So I so am I'm this. Like, yes. I am this. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> so it was just funny. I was talking to to one of the Googlers, and she's like a uh, Texan. She got a real heavy Texas accent. She says "honey child" like every five seconds. <laughs> and she's she was a former opera singer and a Broadway star, oh, wow. and then she wanted to work for Google Education. Don't ask me how all that happened. Wow. But anyway, she was like, she's like, "Honey, let me tell you, we got it going on. We're gonna we're gonna be there." Just hang in with us. It's gonna look funny <laughs> for a while. She's like, she's like, it's gonna look funny for a little while, and then it will straighten itself all out, right? <laughs> I was like, okay. She's like, we don't have any money right now, but we we will track you and keep tracking you, and this is what'll happen. And you just keep track of us, and we'll keep tracking you, and and we'll figure it out, honey. Okay? And I'm like, okay. Uh, and so I was just kind of like, wow, this is what it's like to work with Google. This is all crazy. Yeah. It's, it is so funny when you go behind the curtain and see what the Wizard of Oz really looks like. And you're just like, you're just some basic, mediocre, like, human. <laughs> and Y'all I, are human. Y'all are just straight say, human. Yeah. <laughs> now, I can say, now, I can say some of the some of the rumors are true. The food at Google is bomb. I, mean, I lived in the Bay for, like, four years. So, sis, yeah, like... It's like, 
their campuses the are like amusement park campuses, right? Like, especially Facebook. Like, get your nails done here, get your hair cut there, ice cream. Pie. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Amazing. It's, Amazing. it's ridiculous. <laughs> and you're like, you're, we're getting paid to do this. This is crazy. Yeah. So, yeah. So we've been, you know, we eventually went to the parks and, and Google's paid bills and stuff for us and all that stuff over the years. And, you know, they've given us a five star dinner. I mean, right. really five star. Yeah. You know, the top beef in the world, the top drinks in the world, the top everything, swag all over the place. So Love they've done all that. Yeah. So, so that's been very interesting. So, but, but it was a journey where we had to wait for infrastructure to be built, wait for, the corporations kind of understand how equity works and yep. what it means and they're yep. still working on it right yep. so you know it's in the, in the banks and all this stuff and so now we're in a place where you know we've serviced 10,000 customers beautiful um you know we're going on the next 30 40,000 mm-hmm. um and going into you know reaching millions we reach millions per month on social media but we're going on the tens of millions on social media so now we're now i'm a micro influencer the company's a micro influencer we do all this stuff so so you know it's it's been a long journey and you know we've had a bunch of awards recognition and been at forbes and right so so god is good right because because all of that hardship I mean, I was like in, in, in the tale of Joseph, right? My, my family had sold me off. They just wait for me. They just wait for me. Am I going to come back or am I not going to come back? You preach And, you know, there were so many times when people said, hey, you know, forsake God, forsake your blessing, just curse everybody, right? And it's that same. And I was like, man, the Bible is real. <laughs> the, the Quran is real. The surahs are real. All the stories that they tell you. Preaching are real right and so i'm hindu the hinduism uh arjuna in hinduism he started he has to fight his own family because his family's wrong his family's corrupt he had to fight his own family and then god came by his side and said sometimes you have to fight the good fight so that you can show the glory of god and so i was like okay i'm gonna have to fight the good fight <laughs> And I can tell you on the other side, like I said, and that's why I was saying, don't hold on to bitterness and all that because there's so much that comes from forgiveness and from creativity, right? Take all that bad stuff and turn it into a creative wellspring that can help people, that can service them, that can inspire them to take it to the next level, right? And, uh, you know I I thank God every day the world has changed so much since those days and each time I look at those days right and then I hear you know especially back in Kansas City there's some people still living in that reality that I left the very reality the same one absolutely right right and I'm like it didn't get better yeah right it's like I read a I read an expose about the neighborhood I grew up in and this police officer that was doing things that I can't even talk about on this podcast. What? And a white officer and I and I thought back. I just I woke up after I read. I was kind of half sleep reading it, and then the more I read it, you know, you read something that I woke up and I was like, oh my god, this is still happening. Still. And I remember, I remember my dad being so anxious to move out of the neighborhood. And I didn't know why, right? And we did move out of the neighborhood. We moved to the suburbs. And I was like, why was he so anxious to move out of the neighborhood at that time? And it was because of that cop. I know it for sure now. I felt it in my bones. I was like, that's why he said, I got my 16 year old daughter running around this neighborhood and this this, this monster is victimizing people and I got to get her out of here. I got to get my kids out of here. I got to get my wife out of here. Right? And and I just cried. I was crying like a baby because I was like, I, I didn't know. Of course. You know, and just think about now, even to this day, this guy is in another police, in another district. He got kicked out of the one he was in, but he's still working. He's on the verge of retirement. He's done all this awful, I mean, just the most awful things you can imagine to black women and black people. It's 
frame people, set them up, you know, victimize women, mm-hmm. everything. Mm-hmm. And and I just realized, oh, you know, th- this is the journey is to, you have to keep going because if you don't keep going, it doesn't get fixed. The whole, right. nothing ever heals, right? Because, right? And, and like, we have to all start working together. So now I'm proud to say, you know, we have a lot of black advisors. We have a lot of black people working in our company or, or uh, being serviced by our company. We're working on getting more black people working in our company. Um, and and telling, I'm realizing, telling our stories, when we finally start telling our stories and saying, no, this shit is not easy. That's right. You know, Simone Biles says, this shit's not easy. That's I gotta right. bow out right now. That's right. Like, I gotta take care of myself because this shit's not easy, right? And that's, yep. how, that's how I feel like, this shit's not easy. So I tell yep. people, like, nothing has been easy. Nope. Um, there have been many times where I have been blessed, but nothing is easy. Mm. So, you know, you have to just keep going and saying, hey, you know, things Things can get better, but we all have to play a part in getting this whole system working back together. And get it. And I think about the Panthers, how they transformed their story from being victimized by the government to being the most powerful lawyers on the planet. You know, that's amazing. That's a that's an incredible story that needs to be told. Maybe I'll tell it, you know. Um yeah. But I just, I just keep thinking, man, you know, we all, we all have a part. And I think, you know, and I know we are our ancestors dreams because they went through things that are much more horrific than we, we were going through, but that doesn't make an excuse for us to continuously be victimized and abused. And so we need to just still work for a better planet, a better place, you know, some land of our own freedom all the things we've been uh, that that we've all been working for for these hundreds and thousands of years. Yeah. So we still need to do that. So I'm just very I'm very conscious and humbled by the opportunities that I'm given, and and really you know, I, one to, my struggle was light and my struggle was heavy, mm-hmm. right? My struggle was light. I wasn't being beaten, but mentally they were trying to take my life, right? They're trying to take my life inside right so the tricks of the trickster haven't changed right. they they've they've shifted in form but they haven't changed right. That's right. That's right. so you know you look at it and you go wow you know they're trying to they're trying to make me accept this 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 horrible evil called white supremacy mm-hmm. instead of just doing the right thing and then you realize I, I was watching the newscast and they said they're not going to do the right thing they're not the right people they're never going to do the right thing let's just forget that whole scenario <laughs> so then what is the scenario the scenario is we fight for our, for our rights the scenario is we fight for the land of our own we fight to make things and and, and we we let god help us and, and be on our side right and and that's what that's what we have to do right and so i just i i I always, I'm, I'm getting older. I get emotional all the time, <laughs> but I get emotional about the beauty of how we just keep coming up mm-hmm. and keep happening. And, and, and I say, that's what keeps me going every day Man. is I say, look, I just have to keep coming up because my ancestors did it for me. Amen. My people do it for me. So we just got to keep coming up Amen. and showing up every day. Amen. And, and, you know, that's what I would tell, you know, any black woman whatever your part is whether it's feeding your kids and helping them come up keeping them safe whether it's being Harriet Tubman and leading people to the path of freedom whether it's you know educating kids in school and or you know teach them how to code like we do you know do your part because it all is it all is adding up to something magnificent you know I have to close my eyes because you are speaking into me um into this every time you speak Marie I mean the lifting of your finger is ministry I mean this like you just are drenched you are drenched in in leadership and 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 fierceness right in a way that is not uh, intimidating and scary and and off-putting, but in a way that gives instant credibility to anything that leaves your lips. I mean, you are so 
gifted and powerful and I am honored. I am honored to share this space with you. I'm honored to have shared uh, the times that I've gotten to hear from you in other settings. Um, and I just want to say that your story is, is so important because there are many components to your, your story that I haven't heard from Black women before, right? But we are not a monolith. That's 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 why these platforms are so important. That part. Because we can't continue to let other people tell us what we are, right? And they try to fit in those boxes so that we feel normal, right? Like some of us, like you, right, have had... Uh, proximity to power and many, many different facets which allowed you to dream bigger from the onset right um but then at the same time right uh you still experience those experiences of having to walk away or shut out your family members to protect yourself right to protect your happiness so that you went for what you were called to do right that uh, consistency i hear in all <laughs> of the black women um entrepreneurs i talk to right and then right and you, you are keenly aware of this side of the fact that respectability politics don't keep us safe from racism, right? You can work for yeah. the biggest corporations, you know, turn the biggest profits and ROI for people and they'll still treat you like trash because <laughs> of the color of your skin, right? So yeah, yeah. you underscored the importance. You underscored the importance of not taking off your culture and who you are and your stories when you walk in these spaces, but bringing it all with you because these people don't understand empathy. They don't understand equity. Like you said, they don't understand any of these things and we don't make it better when we go in there and try to be as familiar to them as possible. No, we need these stories. We need these perspectives. We need to challenge the status quo. We need to talk about what our, yeah. like, I mean, even down to, you know, yeah, women make seven cents to the dollar for men. What women? Let's be specific. Is it white women, right? Like, is that true for yeah. Latina women? Is that true for yeah, black and women? And we need to stop being so, and we need to stop being so nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice about it just that's, a, that's what I was like I really wrote on my Facebook to, and there were some little racist people coming and I said look my job is not here to make you feel comfortable right. and I don't fucking have to be nice to you so let me just tell you get the f off my feed that's period right. that's right get, and don't think I'm gonna sit here and take your bs anymore that's nobody that's black that's nobody that's black is here to please you <laughs> yeah, and they just and you know not a comment not a not a word right and it's like you know and I say to people all the time both on my social media and in person is I'm not here to make you feel comfortable I'm here to free my people I'm here to grow for on behalf of women I'm here to grow on behalf of LGBTQ I'm here to help people be free end of story end of story and so you know whatever other agenda you come in with and you're trying to make me feel some kind of way and I and sometimes I tell them oh you know I just go lll lights try making me try to feel some kind of way mm -hmm. you think I'm trying to feel some kind of way so let me so then if you don't understand this let me break it down I had to break down some science to one white guy mm -hmm. because he just thought he knew what he was talking about I just kept deleting stuff I said look for the record, let me break down the science to you. Yeah. Let's just break down the science to you. Let me explain to you why I'm saying what I'm saying. Right? Because they just don't expect you to kick back and say things, say the truth, right? Because we've been tolerating these lies for so many years. That's right, Marie. And so, you know, we have to really just look at that. And then, you know, I'm I'm so thankful because I'm seeing these esteemed. I mean, and when I mean esteem, like the top of the top, mm -hmm. older black men coming out the woodwork finally mm -hmm. and talking and telling us what the real deal is right. <laughs> and, and unifying That's right. with their younger colleagues that they would normally be afraid to talk to. That's right. That's right. And I, I'm telling you, and I have to say hats off, you know, if any of y'all are watching this feed, I'm talking about y'all. Uh, but thank you, you know, for coming out the woodwork and stop hiding their brilliance and their magnificence, yeah. right? And saying like, yeah, you know, I met a man, he's on 13 corporate boards. 13. Not one. <laughs> 13. This black man's on 13. 13. He's 13. a genius at all levels. He's a genius. 
and it, it's just sitting in the background, you know. Yeah. And I mean, the top when I say the top company, like like not Fortune 500, but right up there. So I, you know, I really love these spaces. That's what really you know led me to, you know, all these groups as I find women of color. You know, I'm really thankful, Pharrell. If you ever watch this, Pharrell, thank you for Black Ambition. Mm-hmm. Black Ambition has been the most amazing. If you have not applied to Black Ambition, please do so. We'll do. <laughs> we write it down. <laughs> yeah, the next round of Black Ambition, because Black Ambition is the the business. Um, and Pharrell and his group and everything just really, really helping us get together and and support each other and uh and new voices in essence and those guys helping us get together and, and so i see these groups and and them and, and and you know and black vc all the black vcs getting together mm-hmm. and helping each other mm-hmm. and uh uh proud to be a part of that community and and getting on my journey to becoming a funder mm-hmm. and learning how to be a funder uh, and an investor, and that's that's been an amazing journey. Nice. Um, and and just you know, all all this you know, it, it takes a village. So I, I'm just really grateful that all all the black people are showing up and showing their faces and talking to each other and bringing visibility. And even my colleagues at Black Product Managers, they doing it in the corporate side, mm-hmm. getting everybody on there. They got the USA Today article talking about how it's important for black people in corporate America. Um, and, and so, you know, there's, there's a lot of really great, wonderful things happening Absolutely. and, and, uh, and, and it's, it's nice to see people begin to understand what needs to be done. Um, um yeah. And not sweep it under the rug. Cause we was, we were definitely, you know, I, I love my family and I love the generations that have become be- before us, but we can't sweep it under the rug no more. We can't. We can't. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. So, you know, we have to we have to keep going and, and uh, I'm so proud to see some of my little cousins breaking the mold, starting to get out there. And different people, you know, and, and Black women being the fastest group of entrepreneurs on the planet, the biggest yeah. group. Yeah. Uh, then people started to go to space. I'm ready to go to space. Right. I need to go back and get. I'm like, I'm like, hey, I'm really ready to get back in shape and go to space so I can su- so I can survive those G's. Yeah. And then get up there. Uh, man, let me tell you, like you, I'm telling you, you need to be on the spaceship. Like the. I need to be on the spaceship. The moves sure. you're making, man. The vision you have, Marie. Like you, you have. I have feasted. Like I, I have feasted off of it. Everything you said, I can't even imagine the tears that will be cried um, from other women, uh, other men, even right, other races, even right, who who will finally understand a few things, just a, just a fraction. Just a few <laughs> things. Just a few things of what um, this perspective, this experience, right, this struggle, um, this yearning is all about. Uh oh, like I thank you so much. I, I just have one more question for you because you yes, you fed sis. Um, I know there is so much that you can that you can share. You shared so much, which I'm so grateful for. Um, but if you could leave black women in entrepreneurship with three things, three tips, three to dos, uh, up to you. Uh, what would those be? Um. I'd say keep it pushing. <laughs> keep it going. Like believe in yourself, fake it till you make it, whatever you have to say about all that. You know, like just keep going. Yeah. Right. Even if it's a little bit a day, even if it's years apart. Right. Like keep working on your dream. Keep expressing yourself. What you have to express is beauty. Yeah. So keep it pushing that way. Uh the second thing is. I know I'm so biased, but man, technology is everything. Please get with some technology. Please learn about some kind of technology because it's taken, it, it, it has already taken over everything. And if you don't do tech, you are behind. If you treat tech like a separate thing, you lost. I mean, cause that is where the world is, is 
focus and that's it that's all and there's the haves and the have nots and the haves are the ones with the tech and the have nots are the ones without it so please 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 get with it and, and not just your phone like get a laptop or a tablet or something go you know even if you have to go through a program and get it for free through the program please get something get that going and get some wi-fi in your life and get and and start living about out there um and the third thing i would say is you know be resourceful you know even in the darkest alleyway of life god has placed something in your vision to help you out of that situation I don't care what it is, right? Even, you know, it could be a newspaper. It could be a piece of paper. It could be somebody walking by the alleyway. God is like, God is the energy that's out there. And there's always something out there ready for you. It's like the matrix. It's exactly like it, (laughs) right? There is really something out there for you to begin again any moment. If you think you're in the wrong direction, there is something to get you away from that direction in any moment every moment right and i've been i've been in those places you know i and i didn't talk about that part but you know i've been the party girl for a little bit and been in the wrong alleyway right and god tapped me on the shoulder and said wake up Mm -hmm. right and woke me up in that moment uh which is a story for another day but you know if there are so many different places right because we think we have to we think we have to like you said fit these stereotypes you know we don't all have to be cardi b or Nicki minaj or whatever uh or megan the stallion (laughs) or whatever all that is that you know like and and fly ladies do that i'm really for them Mm -hmm. but that's not everybody right Right. and you can just do you you can just be you and that's beautiful too that's right. You can be Lizzo, you can be Jill Scott. That's right. <laughs> you can be you can be the Miss Jameson, the astronaut. You can be you know, the mama, the bomb mom with the right. bomb mac and cheese. Right. <laughs> you can be whoever, right? But just do you, do it to the maximum. Yep. And do it the best way you know how and keep it pushing. Keep create keep keep recreating yourself. Keep being you, keep expressing yourself. Keep going on journeys, right? Stay alive, stay vibrant. Because, because there are thousands of people watching you. Man. Millions of people watching you. Man. And and that inspires them, even if they don't say nothing. I am so grateful um, that you lent your gifts, your voice, your presence, your power to this platform. Um Marie, please let the people know how they can find you, how to support you, how they can follow you, uh, your websites, like any and all information around uh, the work that you do on your personal brand as well. Please share so that people can uh, follow, support, and get some of your services. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, Data 360, we, um, we help uh, take you into that modern world, take turn your website and your social media into a bona fide platform where you can build your dream community using AI and machine learning and big data. And, and you know, what that really does is saves you a bunch of money. Instead of you giving all your money and time to Facebook, you should be giving it to yourself (laughs) by learning how to put together some technology with us. (laughs) So, so that's really our, our big pitch. Stop giving your money and your time and energy away to big corporations. You can, you can collaborate with them as we do and and have your piece in the in the whole puzzle so if if google and microsoft are down for the cause you should be down for your own cause because we they're our partners right so so that's so that's the paradigm we're up to um and uh we have different packages and and things like that you can email support at data360.solutions um, you can check out our YouTube, our Facebook, our LinkedIn, our Instagram. There's mad tips on there. So much information about running a business, starting a business, 
uh, all the guest spots we do. We just released a podcast with uh, Headspan in Silicon Valley about automation, um, which was with Twilio and Citigroup. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's see, Twilio, Citigroup, and then a couple other teams. And so, so we're just, you know, excited to be out there, help you guys. You know, even if you have a tech question that you think is silly, and you want to know the answer, you can reach out to us. We'll help you figure out where to go. Uh, we also have software grant programs, cash grant programs. We work with investors. Um, and uh, we work with a lot of different companies out there. So if you need resources, that's what we're there for. Um, and then we have training, workshops, grants, uh, around those trainings and workshops as well. So how to make apps, how to make your website, how to get your social media, how to get your SEO going. All that fun stuff. And if you think you know, you don't know. So come. (laughs) So we can help you. Yeah, because you can't Google your way through everything. You really do have to go to experts for something. So, you know, if you feel like you do it by yourself, that's fine. But when you get tired of doing it by yourself and getting mixed results, come to us because we'll help you get on the right track. If you're doing it all, you're doing it wrong. If you're doing it all, you're doing it wrong. If you're doing it all, you're really doing it wrong. That's really the truth. I can say that from experience. Yeah. (laughs) I can say that from experience. If you are doing it all, you're doing it wrong. You really need a team. And, you know, we really focus on being a low cost team. You know, we're as low as $99 a month. Beautiful. Right. 199 a month for you to have a team. I don't know if you know about salaries, but that's nowhere close to anybody's salary. So right. we really focus on get, being right. kind of the Uber Uber of tech for you. So that's what we do. That's so right. Well, I'm um, marking this for my budget. Y'all better go to Marie and get the help. Um, and she's right. Like corporation calling it digital transformation. But honestly, especially if you just starting a business, if you build this thing from the ground up to be technologically sophisticated with integrations and automations and understanding how to mine data so that the, the, the consumers tell you what they like and you build products based on that like you say so much time so many years of learning yeah guessing <laughs> yeah and it's not like GoDaddy y'all GoDaddy was made in the 90s let me tell you please get off GoDaddy <laughs> and Wix and all them like this good it's good for like a very basic test but like don't build your whole business we are we spend so much time migrating people off of GoDaddy and Wix and these old school services that don't do nothing for them and and they spend sometimes you know we had a lady spend thirty thousand dollars on a website that she's now go has to rebuild and she's rebuilding with us for 300 a month see this this so that so that's so that's not 90% off what she spent. That's not 90% savings. That's like 99% savings. And you keeping all that money in your pocket, right? <laughs> yeah, she's keeping all that money in her pocket right. and it's just by shifting the paradigm that she knows. I thank you for what you do. Like it's so important. Lay's Business Intensive is the six week business management course for black women. Enroll today by going to blazebusinessintensive.com.